All right, guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going over my 2009 Mac Pro. Now, originally, this Mac Pro came configured with a 8 core, 2.66 gigahertz Intel Xeon 5550 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, the NVIDIA GT120 GPU, and a two terabyte SATA HDD installed. And I paid about $325 for this on Craigslist. It was quite a find and I'm quite happy with that purchase. The reasons for my purchase of this coming from a MacBook Pro, I wanted to expand my capabilities as far as storage, processor, ins and outs as far as ports and memory as well and so this mac pro allows for all of that i've been able to upgrade my storage upgrade my ram the processors have been upgraded and also with this mac pro if you take a look at the back panel there are so many more ports than are available on a macbook pro i've got a total of five usb 2.0 ports included and it's also got an optical in and out. And we've got ethernet, two ethernet ports. And then I've also got analog 3.5 millimeter in and out on the rear. And then an extra 3.5 millimeter output on the front. So this thing is just loaded out of the box with so many more inputs and outputs than the MacBook Pro. And that really helps because I do a lot of audio production and all these ports really assist with plugging in speakers, headphones, and whatever else I can come up with in my recording process. Regarding storage capabilities, standard, the Mac Pro comes with four hard drive bays. These are all SATA hard drives, which are a bit on the slow side, but these really come in handy when we're talking about expanding storage, scratch disks when you're working with Final Cut, and in my case, I use one of the drive bays as my Plex media server to serve all my content. When I'm watching movies, you can install the Plex media server. So in addition to all of the other capabilities that I'll get into a little bit later in the video, this Mac Pro just allows for so much more functionality than what was possible with the MacBook Pro. Jumping into the upgrades, Right off the bat, I flashed the 2009 4,1 to the 5,1, and I'll provide a link down in the description on how to do that if you pick up one of these 2009 4,1 units. The next step I took was to upgrade the eight core dual processors to two of the Intel Xeon 5680 six core processors for a total of 12 cores. And the 5680 operates at a much higher speed than the Intel Xeon 5550 that was included with the unit. So I'm really happy with that upgrade. I upgraded the RAM to 24 gigabytes from the eight that was included. It was a really affordable and inexpensive upgrade. There were two four gigabyte modules included when I purchased the unit. And then I just went ahead on eBay and found matching DIMMs at four gigabytes. I purchased four of them and it was a really affordable purchase. Again, I'll include links to all of the items that I used in the description. So if you wanna make these same upgrades, you'll be able to find these components on eBay or elsewhere online. Addressing the GPU, I chose the Sapphire Radeon RX 580 graphics card. This card gets excellent reviews. It's by no means the top tier, but for the price, it was a fantastic upgrade, highly recommended. The card has just been excellent when I'm editing in Final Cut, even when I'm doing gaming. I play Quake, it's an old outdated game, but I really enjoy it. And I notice the playback is so much smoother than what I was able to get uh, running the MacBook Pro with an external monitor. So highly recommended. That's the Sapphire Radeon RX 580 graphics card. Another addition I made to the Mac Pro was to add a four port USB 3.0 card. And for that, I went with the high point 
card. This card is a little bit more expensive than some of the cheaper options you can find, but I went with this for the sole reason that there's less interference when we're talking about between the card and a Bluetooth Wi-Fi card that you might install. And also, each of the ports gets its own power. Sometimes with the cheaper cards, you'll find the power is divided between the four ports. So when you start to plug in additional external devices, you'll run into issues with hard drives being ejected prematurely. And this high point, like I said, gives you four independent ports with independent power to each port. So you don't have those issues with Bluetooth uh, over the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. You don't have that interference, at least from the reports in my research on this card. And so I think this is a great buy, the High Point 4 port PCIe NVMe USB 3.0 card. Regarding Bluetooth connectivity, at first I went with a really expensive option to upgrade the Mac Pro to Bluetooth 4.0 and also to upgrade the Wi-Fi spec to current standards. And I went with this really expensive card. It cost me around $128, I believe, when I purchased uh, this card. And it was Bluetooth 4.0. The issue with Bluetooth 4.0, though, is that you have restrictions on the range of your connectivity to your Bluetooth devices. So even if I was to walk into the next room with my Bluetooth headphones, the music would start to cut out immediately and sometimes stop altogether. And so I decided to scrap that card and I'm going with a much cheaper Bluetooth 5.0 dongle. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, but I found the built-in Ethernet direct connection to be much more reliable anyway. And with that connection, I still have all the connectivity that I need with cellular calling with my iPhone and also iMessage. Those both work without having Wi-Fi or Bluetooth active. And so this Bluetooth dongle that I've decided to upgrade to will just handle the music playback. That's all I need to connect with my Mac Pro. Depending on your own situation, one of these really expensive Wi-Fi Bluetooth cards might be the best option for you. But for me, this Bluetooth dongle that I'm purchasing operates on the 5.0 spec, which is higher transfer speeds and also greater range. And so that's what I decided to go with for this build. I mentioned before the excellent connectivity built in to the Mac Pro. And one of the upgrades I was able to make was to a optical digital analog converter. And with that, I can plug into the optical output of the Mac Pro and I get pure digital audio streaming out to my two stereo speakers and also a third output to my subwoofer. And so now I have just a clean signal coming straight out of the Mac Pro via the optical port. And that solves all my audio needs. I don't do a lot of inputs as far as recording microphones and whatnot when I'm producing music. So this simple card that I was able to find on eBay uh, serves its purpose and is a seamless and effective addition to my recording studio. So it's highly recommended. Again, I'll provide a link down in the description to this specific card and I couldn't recommend it more. Taking a look at the exterior of the unit, I decided to go with this beautiful black matte finish to match the other elements in my studio. It's just a flat black uh, Rust-Oleum paint you can buy for around $8 a can. And then I found these uh, beautiful decals on eBay. You can buy them for around $2 a piece. You can get them in a myriad of different colors, but I decided to go with the white to match some of the decals that you see in the background in my studio. And so this Mac Pro really matches the look and feel of all the pieces I have and really sits well in my studio and provides for a really nice aesthetic. It was not very expensive, but for me, a really important part of the build. Regarding the upgrade to my storage, I decided to go with a Glow Trends PCIe SSD adapter. This thing is excellent. It's just plug and play, goes right into one of the available PCIe slots. And then as far as the hard drive, I went with the Western Digital Blue SN550 drive. I get much quicker speeds than the SATA connections, and it's just a really cost-effective and excellent upgrade if you're looking for more speed. And in the future, I'm deciding 
to upgrade and add an additional drive so that I have a scratch disk for Final Cut Pro and Photoshop that will run at those high speeds as well. So I'll have a one terabyte uh, drive and then use the other available PCIe slot for a 500 gigabyte SSD. So it's a really excellent upgrade that you can do to increase the speed and storage capacity on your Mac Pro. Highly recommended. So that wraps up this build. All in all, I spent around $850 for the entire purchase plus the entire upgrade. And it's just been an excellent and welcome addition to my studio. I'm able to get so much more work done uh, as far as entertainment. Uh, it adds those features that I mentioned with, you know, being able to run my Plex server, gaming with the new GPU. Um, it's just been a, a blessing and I highly recommend if you're in the market and you're on a budget to find one of these Mac Pros and do the upgrade. This is my budget build. It's my pleasure to bring this to you. Make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for so much more. We'll see you in the next one.